What's going on everybody, Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're gonna to be replacing rear brakes on an F3328 i that has the BMW Performance Optional Brake Kit installed. This is gonna be the same for any F30 uh, 3 Series, any F22, F23 2 Series, and any F32, F33, and F36 4 Series that has the Brembo style calipers on it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward job. You can save yourself a whole bunch of money by doing it yourself. And uh, we're going to go through the process and how you go about doing that. But first, let's talk about some of the tools you're going to need to do this job. All right, so some of the tools needed to do the rear brakes on an F30 with the Brembo calipers. 3 8 ratchets are going to be your friend. Preferably have a pretty long one for leverage, especially for the caliper carrier bolts. 17 millimeter socket for the lug bolts. 16 millimeter socket for the caliper uh, carrier bolts. 6 millimeter Allen for removing the brake rotor set screw. A uh, half inch to three eighths adapter, which I'm using with the torque wrench uh, for torquing those caliper carrier bolts back. Uh, 10 millimeter socket for removing at least a couple of the bolts uh, or, or nuts that hold on the splash shield to gain access to the electrical connector box for the padware sensor. You're going to want a thin punch like this to remove the guide pins from the caliper to get the brake pads out. The most abused tool in the shop, aka the Phillips head screwdriver, you're going to want that. A couple of different extensions, a couple of different hammers uh, for both removing the uh, rotor off the hub and for installing the brake caliper pad uh, retaining pins. Torque wrench that can do at least 50 newton meters of torque and if it does torque angle even better because you will have to torque angle those rear caliper carrier bolts. Really nice to have these hangers on hand for holding up the caliper while you're working on other parts of the system. You will need special caliper retraction tools because this is multi-piston both uh, on the inboard side and outboard side. So. You need to retract those evenly, so this is really the one special tool that you'll need. Helps to have a light and it helps to have some of these electrical tools as well to make the job go by a little bit faster. Uh, but these aren't required, it's just nice to have. So now that we've talked about some of the tools you're gonna need, let's go ahead and get into the job. So first step, take the wheel off. Obviously make sure the uh, vehicle's properly supported and uh, safely in the air off the ground. Do not rely on hydraulic jack stands. Um, and whatever you do, do not stick your head under the vehicle until the car is properly supported. Cars are pretty heavy, I heard, and uh, you don't want to get hurt. So, enough with that. 17 millimeter for the factory lug bolts. If you have some kind of aftermarket wheel hardware, it might be different, but BMW is traditionally 17. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Set screw is a six millimeter Allen. These things can sometimes become seized in the hub if you find yourself with that problem. You might have to drill it out. If you strip the hex, uh, you might have to just drill this out, or if you have a cold chisel, you might be able to get it moving with the cold chisel. So next up, I'm just gonna go ahead and hammer uh, the rotor right here on the hub. Uh, guaranteed this is gonna be held on by a little bit of corrosion, so I just wanna free it up now. And we're also gonna wanna probably retract the uh, parking brake me mechanism a little bit, but, I'm gonna worry about that after I get the caliper off. Brake pads are held in by these two pins. I'm gonna take this punch and start moving them out. These are not really held in by anything other than just a retaining clip, which is part of the pin itself. So they come out pretty easily once they're moving. And they go through this uh, anti-rattle clip or a retaining clip for the pads. I'm just using this flathead screwdriver to push uh, one of these uh, brake pads back a little bit so I can work with the retaining pad a little bit better. There's a lot of corrosion on the surface of these pins so they can be a little bit tricky to get out sometimes. I'm gonna just use these channel locks and there we go. Clip came flying out at the same time, so that works. We're gonna clean these pins up before we reinstall them, get all the corrosion off of them. You can see all the corrosion on these pins, that's what was holding us up there. And obviously once I pulled one pin out, the uh, retaining clip came off with it at the same time, so that's convenient. These pads are super worn. And they're very stuck in there. Let's see if I can just pry it off a little bit. Pry it out, get it moving. There we go. And 
Now, on the rear right corner, which is what we're working on, uh, that's where the padware sensor is located. There's only one padware sensor per axle. It's either on the front left or the rear right for most applications. Um, just pulled the sensor off, but we have to trace the wire for the padware sensor all the way back to its electrical housing, which is probably somewhere back here. We're gonna worry about that a little bit later. Caliper is held on with uh, two 16 millimeter bolts. It's not a ton of room back here, so I'm gonna just use a ratchet on this. Pop the bleeder screw cap off so we can just move the uh, brake pad wear sensor out of the way before I completely remove it. I'm gonna try to push those pistons back in on the caliper. They should go back in easily. There we go. Yeah. Maybe here. Yep, there we go. Last but not least, we're gonna to try to remove the rotor. I don't think it's held up on the parking brake shoes. I think it's just held on with corrosion, so I'm gonna tap it a couple more times, see if it comes free. There we go. Put a uh, wheel bolt back in, just so that the rotor wouldn't come flying off. And there we go. Uh, if the parking brake was hung up on the rotor, uh, you can move the hub up until about this 1130 position and you'll actually see uh, the star wheel, which is the adjuster. Uh, so if you needed to adjust the parking brake, you can come in here with a flathead screwdriver and basically move that star wheel to take some tension off these parking brake shoes. Next, I'm gonna clean the surface of the wheel hub off. You can see all this corrosion that's built up. The rotor has to sit on this hub. It also has to sit on top of this lip here. Any corrosion buildup there may prevent the new rotor from sitting correctly, so you wanna make sure you knock all that back. Um, also, um, it could help if you want. You can also clean off the surface where the wheel sits, uh, but you could do that after you put the brakes on. That's not really as important as it is getting this surface and that surface clean. Minty. So next up, I'm gonna take our new rotor, slide it onto the hub. It actually fits really nicely. So get rid of all that corrosion. I'm gonna install the set screw, just so that the rotor can't physically go anywhere. Now on these uh, Zimmerman Z-coated rotors, um, you don't have to clean the braking surface. Leave it as it is. Also worth noting that these rotors, even though they have these surface features, are non-directional. Uh, the venting is what makes the rotor directional, not the surface features. Uh, that's often a question we get. Doesn't matter if you buy a genuine rotor, a Zimmerman rotor, any of these OE-style rotors with these features, um, the surface features are gonna be the same, uh, regardless of whether it's a left or right rotor. Uh, obviously, these are gonna be pointed in a different direction, but it has no effect on the braking performance. It's the internal venting that matters on the rotor. Um, so it is the same part number left and right. And in this particular case, we're installing the one piece rotor from Zimmerman as opposed to the two piece semi floating rotor that Zimmerman also offers and BMW uses on this. These are a lower cost alternative and uh, it's a good option for a street car. Um, not really gonna notice any type of difference, uh, but if you're looking to save some money, these one piece are a good way to go. Before we get too carried away, we wanna take uh, care of a padware sensor. The electrical connector is basically up behind here. So we have a bunch of 10 millimeter fasteners and potentially eight millimeter fasteners we have to remove. I wanna see how far back I can sort of pull this fender liner without having to remove too many. So it's 10 millimeter up over here. Let's see if that gains access. Actually, perfect, right there. Only one 10, mil 10 millimeter and the door was also open for us. So it was just asking for us to remove it. So before we remove our padware sensor, we're just gonna make note of how it's routed. Uh, it sits on this bracket here on this upper control arm. So we're gonna wanna make sure that when we install the new one, we follow the same route. Fuck, dude. 
So we're gonna go install our new power sensor, make sure that the connector clicks into place. Uh, there's a locking tab on it, so you can kinda see that it's bottomed out. It sits in the housing like so. There's a little ceiling grommet on the bottom. We're gonna make sure that the housing is closed this time. And now it's just a matter of, now it's just a matter of routing uh, this lead all the way back to where the uh, brake caliper goes. We're installing brand new caliper bolts here in the rear. They have Loctite on them, or the, at least the new ones do. I don't think the original ones did. Uh, these are actually torqued to yield in the rear, which is a little bit different because they are not in the front. So it's 50 new meters plus 90, which is why we're replacing these. So now we're going to go ahead and take it to 90 degrees. So these guide pins have uh, quite a bit of corrosion on them, uh, but they should clean up just fine. So instead of replacing these, we're just gonna reuse them, which is traditionally fine. If you saw a, a ton of pitting on them, you might wanna replace them, but uh, if you can clean them up with a wire wheel, you can go ahead and reuse them. So next up, we can go ahead and slide the pads in. Uh, one thing that you might wanna do beforehand is make sure that the uh, caliper is clean on the inside where the pads sit. Uh, basically a good way to test that is make sure that the pads can physically slide around. If it's tight, you need to clean that up. We're also gonna install our new pad wear sensor. Should just click into place on the new pad like so. And there's a nice little recess here on the caliper to uh, secure that cable. Next, we're gonna install the retaining clip and our pins. Uh, the retaining clip, these, uh, where it's triangular, uh, should be facing downward towards the pads. This basically acts as a giant spring. Next, we just slowly get our guide pin installed. Want to make sure that it hooks on to the clip. So we got the top hooked. And then the bottom, we want to get the pin through the, through the uh, brake pad, and then we want to hook it onto the bottom of this retaining clip. So this basically acts as a spring. And everything lines up. You should almost be able to push them all the way through by hand, but uh, they do have the retaining pin on them, so I'm just going to tap them the rest of the way in. Once they're installed, the pads should be able to move freely. Uh, if you find that the pads are really tight, you might need to go back in and clean up the caliper. Uh, but everything should be held in place with the pins and the retaining clip. And uh, in this case, the TRW Ultras, they include that new retaining clip or the anti-rattle spring, whatever you like to call it. But in this case, it really is a retaining clip uh, for the pads. Um, definitely want to make sure you replace this. The pins you don't necessarily need to replace. Uh, just make sure they're not heavily pitted and you'll be fine. Uh, but from this point forward, the last thing we need to do is make sure our brake pad wear sensor is hooked back onto the caliper bleeder cover. And we're done. So that's how you go about uh, servicing the rear brakes on your F30 if you have the Brembo calipers, uh, whether it's a factory installed uh, performance option or whether you have the BMW dealer installed package, it's the exact same process. As you can see, super straightforward. I, I know that those multi-piston calipers could look intimidating, but the only thing you need are the special caliper uh, depressor tool just to make sure those pistons are pushed back in evenly. Uh, but other than that, it's all basic straightforward hand tools. There's nothing really too terribly difficult or different about doing these over the standard, more conventional floating brake calipers that you might see on a bunch of other BMW 
BMWs. Depending on your brake fluid, you might want to go and uh, service your brake fluid at this time. Uh, you also want to go ahead and reset the service indicator on your instrument cluster. We have a video that shows you how to do that. We'll go ahead and throw a little card up here that you can click and I'll take you to that video show you how to do that. Uh, and other than that, make sure you pump the brakes before you go for a test drive to bed in those brakes because you're gonna be super disappointed if you don't do that, you will not be able to stop. So make sure that the pedal's nice and firm before you throw it in drive and you go down your driveway. Uh, but other than that, super simple. Save yourself a bunch of money by doing this yourself at home. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. We'll go ahead and get back to you with that. Also hit that like button, hit subscribe. We've got lots more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.